Good, audio. Ba, 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 ba. We got the DualSense Edge in the mail and I wanna compare it against the Xbox Series Elite 2. Let's see which controller takes the cake. This one, I need a knife. Where's my knife, Michael? Oh, here we go, I kinda got it here. Off the bat, I do like this case. It's like a hard shell case with a fabric zipper. There is an opening here for Velcro to charge the controller when it's sitting in the case. Let's go ahead and open this up. They do have a similar look to the Xbox controller case. They have all the buttons laid out in the case itself. It seems like they've definitely taken a few notes off the Xbox book here. Ooh, here it is. DualSense Edge controller. Feels nice just right off the bat. One of the things I am noticing is the texture on the actual buttons themselves. Compare it to a standard DualSense controller, you can see there's quite a big difference. Not as much as of a difference compared to the Elite controller. Feels more premium right off the bat. More rubbery material here, some metal features, which I do like. I actually don't like how this is glossy on the faceplate, but I believe you can replace this glossy front. You can take these thumbsticks off. Little levers here. Ooh, say goodbye to stick drift. Now you can swap out your entire joystick and you don't have to worry about your sticks ever breaking, which is the most common problem with the controllers. Now you could just easily swap out these modules and you're good to go. That's kind of weird. You're just gonna pop this joystick directly off just by yanking at it. I don't like that. With the Xbox Elite controller, it's very seamless. You kind of get this nice, satisfying magnetic click. So they give you a low profile one and a taller one. There isn't much difference here. I really like that on the Xbox controller, they give you like a really tall one, different shapes on the top here. Very nice cable that comes with the DualSense Edge. Nice and braided, it feels nice and soft. It also comes with a lock. So it looks like it has these little prongs here that come out. Those will pop into the side of your controller. So when you switch this lever, it's gonna lock into your controller, which is pretty sweet. Not gonna come out while you're playing an intense gaming session. So we got adjustable trigger links at the back here. This is something that the Elite has as well. Once again, I would say the Elite does feel a little more premium when you are clicking those buttons. If you're playing Call of Duty, you want that trigger to hit nice and fast, then yeah, you could reduce that length significantly. But I do believe when you do change these lengths, you do lose that adaptive trigger a bit. Onto the style of the controller, they have a nice glossy blue slash black buttons. They have the black touchpad, which does look really cool as well. Xbox, I personally really like how you can change the D-pad on here versus on the DualSense Edge, you're stuck with the standard placement. On the Elite, they give you two options. You have the standard and you have this reverse dome type D-pad. Buttons on the Elite, they do have a little bit more premium feel, I will say. Something I really like about the DualSense is just the feedback and the haptic engine inside of here, I think it's much more sophisticated. The Elite is a little more standard on the vibrations. The DualSense Edge is gonna give you more of that immersion. Back buttons, we got four on the Xbox Elite Series 2 versus a singular back button, but they do give you some options here. They have a half dome back button, which is definitely unique, definitely cool. But when you have too many buttons back here, it could get a little bit busy and your hands can click different triggers by accident. I think sometimes it's too much when you have a bunch of buttons and you don't end up actually using them. With the addition, um, of these function buttons on the front of your controller. You can now combine the function button with some of these other buttons that can then remap, you know, maybe turn your volume up or share a photo or something like that. Xbox does still have the button remapping on here, but it doesn't allow for you to combine the buttons like it does on the PS5. Another key feature of your Xbox Elite is the magnetic dock that allows you to charge the controller on the back here, which I really like. And you could actually have it plugged in at all times in the case because there's a slot here that is going to allow you to charge the controller so then you don't have to fiddle around with a cable when you're trying to plug it into your travel case here. So personal preference on these two controllers. I personally play PS5 so I would go for the DualSense Edge controller. I like what they did with the rubber inserts here and the singular button I really like on the back. The style is really nice. In terms of the actual build quality, I do like the Xbox better. I think it, it feels more premium. The style of it is much more sleek. It kind of reminds me of like a Ferrari or something cool like that. The lights on the front here are very nice. It has a nice soft texture across the entire front of the controller, which I really like. And when I'm playing with the controller, I feel like I'm a boss. You know, I have the best controller on the market. But in terms of the console I like playing and what I normally go with is the PS5. So I would go with this if you are a PlayStation gamer. If you're more PC and you're on the Xbox side, I would definitely go for the Xbox Series Elite 2.